was lying down in bed there and I was thinking I'm gonna make a wee vlog a vlog's not a video I'm gonna make a wee journal entry sometimes I think that I might make wee short videos of you know stories memories so that in years to come when I'm old and grey and I can't remember anything I can watch these videos and go who's that good looking fella except of course I can't because it's not a video of my face but he'll say to himself that fella's got a good looking good looking voice anyway I, I digress so I was, I was lying in bed there and I was thinking I'll make a wee video and I jumped up and I didn't realise how far up the bed I was and I head butted the headboard of the bed and it's made of wood so yeah in reverence to my video last week of things that bug me number one is still me so there's two wee stories from the last few days at work that I want to put down so no names will be mentioned or they will be mentioned but I'll like they do in the movies and TV shows I'll change them so I was at work last week and I had to help a passenger off a train and I don't want to really go into a stereotype here but I won't mention what country this passenger was from but let's just say I've never struggled so much in all my life to push a wheelchair um, this woman was let me, let me put it this way whenever she was sitting down I had the wheelchair behind her and she was about to sit down in it and I thought to myself her horse isn't going to fit in this chair again I'm not giving away any hints as to what country this American was from so, so she sat down in the chair and she said oh why do you Irish people have such narrow wheelchairs and I said it was the widest wheelchair that we had and it was because we actually had narrower ones I just happened to bring down the wide one you know and you know thank god otherwise you know she would have snapped she would have snapped the other ones and so then of course she had luggage with her and I was there on my own helping her because the other member of staff was busy elsewhere and she says do you have somebody who can help you and I said no and she goes what are you going to do with all my luggage and I said what luggage and she says there's, there's luggage around the corner there and just around the corner there was three large suitcases and I just thought Jesus Christ what am I going to do so then she says sure put one between my and the wheelchair between my knees and then I'll wheel one beside me and then sure if you, if you can push the wheelchair with one hand sure you can carry the other one <laughs> and, and I was just like push this wheelchair with one hand no 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 I'm not going to be pushing this wheelchair with one hand so as luck would have it there was someone with an, an electric cart so he put all her luggage up up in the in the in the cart and almost like something you'd see on tv or you know movie or whatever she said be careful with that my husband's in there i'm scattering his ashes around the world as you do so the other guy put the luggage in the cart and then I pushed the wheelchair now 
because of the weight and the angle at which I was pushing the wheelchair. Have you ever seen someone pushing a, a car? <laughs> Have you ever seen anyone pushing a tank? Anyway, um, my head was facing downwards because I was really getting my centre of gravity as low as I could. And because of the lowness, is lowness a word? Because of the lowness can't be a word, is lowness a word? Because of how low I was, I was looking downwards. And no word of a lie, the wheelchair, the rubber, the rubber wheels of the wheelchair were flat. I don't mean flat as in they went down. I mean as in they were compressed flat to the ground. <laughs> and I was just like, holy God. So I was pushing as hard as I could. And I got her. And I was pushing her along the, the platform. And she, she kept saying, I think you're going to push me over the side. And I said, I wouldn't do that. She says, I think you are. And I said, I wouldn't do that. That's, that'll be too much paperwork for me to have to do afterwards. And I don't know if she understood it was a joke. Because, you know. So I helped her on out, out through the station. Luckily enough, there was a now member of staff met me at the top of the lift and he took the luggage. But he didn't take the, 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 the wheelchair. And it's, I don't know, I'm not quite sure how it happens. But whatever way the wheelchair is constructed, now this lady isn't the first person he's made this complaint. Um, we have another large individual passenger and she makes the same complaint that whenever they're being pushed in the wheelchair that the wheelchair burns their ass. It doesn't burn any calories though. So she was complaining that this wheelchair is burning my ass. And I was like, please keep your voice down when you say that. Because, you know, you're you're walking through the station and you have this loud person of an anonymous nationality going, my ass is on fire. And you're like, oh, God. Shush. Yeah. So anyway, I took her to where she needed to go. And that was that. So that was one day. And then the next day, I was told that there was an old man in the station who had sold himself. And I thought, fantastic. Just what I need to brighten up my day. So I went around uh, to the front of the station and there was an old man using a taxi free phone, booking himself a taxi. And his left leg was orange from the color of his jeans or khakis, whatever sort of material they were. And his right leg was mostly brown. And I thought, lovely. And the man seemed to be about 90. And he had a white stick, so he was blind, or partially sighted. And I thought, what a wonderful combination. We've got a drunk blind man who's pissed, he shit himself. Pissed or shit, not quite sure. But to be honest, at this stage, I still don't know. And so he started walking in the wrong direction for the taxi. So I told him, I said to him, excuse me, sir. Did you order a taxi? And he goes, blah, blah, blah. and I says, what? 
and he had to, oh. and at that point I noticed that he had no teeth either he just had black gums and I was like right okay no problem I said your taxi is where you just come with me and he says I'm blind and I said that's okay just take my arm and he says what do you mean it's okay and I said I'm not quite sure how to answer that um, so I said just come with me so I, I put him in I put him in the lift and I take him to the area where the taxis come S secure in the knowledge that no taxi is going to take him because he shit himself and his trousers are very obviously wet and damp and you know full of shit or piss you know it doesn't matter it's not a good combination to sit down in so walked him out down to the taxi area and once he was outside I turned around and I noticed that there was a trail of brown goo along the tiles of the ground the whole way from the lift and I thought lovely that's just great don't don't take a deep breath Captain. so I walked over to the lift he was standing outside having a cigarette happy as Larry so I walked over to the lift and there was a larger brown poo puddle in the lift so I had a radio to get some cleaners down to sort that out and they said okay we'll send the cleaner down and then I says make sure he brings a mop bucket of hot hot water and they're like yeah okay so the old man was outside and he finished his cigarette and he came up to walk in and we were like sorry sir you can't come in and he says why not and I says well sir you've sold yourself you can't come into the station you can't sit down you can't you know you can't come in basically you know like, you know you shut yourself and he goes rah, 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 rah. and I was like sir I can't understand what you're saying and he rah, 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 rah. and I was like sir I'm sorry I don't want to be ignorant but I just I don't understand what you're saying and of course because he was right in front of me the smell was fantastic you know reminded me of home <laughs> I don't mean my parents house I mean my house anyway that's a joke it's worse um, so then of course the taxi pulls up and the taxi driver sees this man standing there with uh, very obviously soiled treasures and the taxi driver just looks at us doesn't get out of his car just shakes his head and say, and just drives off. So the old man's standing there and he's just muttering and muttering and giving off to us and why can't I come into this station? I'm like, sorry, you can't come in because, you know, you've soiled yourself. I'm like, what's that? I said, sorry, sir, I can't, I can't understand you. So time goes by and he's beating on the door with his white stick and stuff like that and I'm trying to decide what to do with them because now this is not gonna well it may be harsh well, it's not harsh you see if your man was sighted I mean like say if you but if you came to where I work and you shit yourself, you'd be like, hello, it's time to leave on your way. Oh, I want to come in. No, tough, away you go. But you, you can't do that to a blind man. You just can't, obviously. So after about half an hour, 35 minutes or so of him standing outside, I thought to myself, we're going to have to do something here. We're going to have to get the police for him. Just so maybe, now I'd already asked him, did he have someone who could come pick him up? I asked him, did he have any, did he have a mobile on him? And uh, um, did he 
did he have anyone he could call, he could come pick him up, and he, like, did he have any family, any friends? And he says, no, no, I have no one, I don't have a phone. And I was like, right, he said, I just want to go home, get me a taxi. And I said, sorry, you can't get a taxi, why not? I said, sorry, you're soaking wet. And I said, you've wet, you've wet yourself or something. And he says, blah, 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 blah. and I says, okay, sir. So then, then what happened? So I, I called the police. Not not a nine 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 call, just like you know, a, a call to the local police station. And I said, listen, it's me, and you know who I am. No, I didn't. Anyway, um, I said, look, here's the situation. We've got an old man, he must be near 90, and he's drunk. He's soiled himself, and he's blind, and he's no way home. He can't get a taxi because he can't get into the car because he's shut himself. And he's standing here, and I said he's starting to get a wee bit of a nuisance. Because as I say, he was beating on the doors and shouting and stuff. And yelling about a taxi. I says, can you send a car around to see if you can do something for him? Or, you know, get in contact with someone to come get him. And the police says, okay, we'll, we'll send a car around. So that was that. So in the meantime, I was talking away to the old, old man. And... I told him my name was Kevin and he told me his name and we're by this stage he was now starting to sober up a wee bit, he was starting to understand what he was saying. And we're standing making chit chat and just talking about, you know, women and girls and travel, you know, the usual stuff. And I was just trying to get a wee bit of information that I could pass on to the police and the or the ambulance or whatever turned up, you know. And I said, let's see, let's give him a fake name. We'll call him Charlie. And I said, Charlie, how old are you? And he says, 66. And I said, what? He says, 66. And I says, my God, I told the police you were near 90. And he goes, what? And I says, Charlie, did you have a hard life? And he goes, how old are you? And I says, I'm 38. He says, you're getting old. And I says, I, but I don't know it. So anyway, so the police turned up and they had, a, they had a look at him. And I say had a look, I mean, they didn't even get out of the car. And I explained the situation. And I said, I've got an old man, he's blind. He's drunk, and he shit himself. And I think I've just talked you into driving away as fast as you can. And they said, well, if he's not in a safe position to get himself home, then that's a job for the ambulance. And I says, okay. He said, and they said, well, if you need us, give us a call. And I'm like, okay. So then the only way of calling them is 999. So I rang 999 for an ambulance and they were like, um, what's, what's the condition of the patient? And I said, he's uh, drunk and he shut himself and he's standing beside me. And they were like, is he conscious? And then I was thinking, right, they're not listening to what I'm saying. I must be going through like a checklist sort of thing, you know. And I says, yes, he's conscious. He's standing beside me. Is he bleeding? And I says, no, he's drunk. He's not. He's not, he's not hurt. And they said, um, is he vomiting? And I said, no, he's just standing beside me. Um, is he lightheaded? And I was like, I don't think so. <laughs> he's just standing beside me here smoking. And he says, uh, can you tell me what happened to him? 
And I said, well, he's blind. I don't know what caused that. But he shot himself. <laughs> and I said, right. And he says, no, I says, I don't think you're needed. And he says, I don't want an ambulance. I says, there's real people who need ambulances, people who are hurt or sick. And I says, but we'll call the police for this fella. And he... And they think it's an ambulance matter, and they left. And the ambulance person said, um, ambulance dispatch person said, well, you know, it's the duty, duty of care for the police to get this man home. And I said, that's what I thought. And he says, but I think maybe they weren't interested. So they've passed the book. And the woman was like, okay, sure. We'll send an ambulance, I'll we'll send a paramedic round to you. And I says, okay, thanks very much. So, and back to a bit more chatting, chatting away to Charlie. See how good it was there to remember the fake name. So, more chatting. Charlie complaining about the cold, because it was now getting cold. Charlie complaining about the cold, and Kevin got me a taxi. I says, Charlie, I can't get you a taxi. He says, why not? I says, because you've shit yourself. He says, I put us near to right now. I says, but Charlie, you stink. He says, I will be okay. And I was like, no, you won't. You won't be okay. You can't You can't get into someone's car like that. You'd ruin the seats and, you know, you can't do that. So, uh, about half an hour later, there's still no sign of anything. So I called the police back again on the you know the call centre number just like the local police station and I went through the whole the whole rigmarole again and I said I'm waiting for the ambulance or the police, I don't know who's gonna come. And the woman said, Well, I'll tell you what we'll do is um give us five minutes and we'll liaise with the with the ambulance service and we'll see what we're gonna do. And I said, that'll do. So five minutes later, she called back. And she says, it's going to be a police car. I'll come around and see how things are. And I said, that'll do. Thank you. So carried on. A bit more chat. More of the usual. And I, at this stage, it was starting to get a bit... It was starting to get cold. And Charlie was complaining about the cold. And, you know... I don't want to get down a hypothermia or something like you know, or pneumonia or whatever you know, think. Was it was getting cold? It doesn't matter. Basically, it was cold. Basically, I was cold. So I'm sure him with his wet legs was cold. So I thought, right, I'll bring you into the station, but you can't sit down. And he says, why not? I says, can you shit yourself? He goes, oh why? So, but then of course, as soon as I brought him into the station, it was warmer in the station. And then that meant the smell came up again. I said, I had to bring him back outside again. And he goes, why am I going outside? And I said, the smell. And he goes, right. So we're having a bit of banter outside, having a bit of a laugh. And uh, then, this is now three hours later after I first saw him, the paramedics arrive. And they said, what's wrong with him? And I went into the usual story. And... I says, I don't think you're needed. Sorry, it's 8 a.m. and I've been awake since 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock yesterday. Um, I don't think you're needed, I says, but the police wouldn't take him. And he's blind and I don't want him out here on his own. He's, you know, he's cold. So they went over to him and they said, Charlie. Charlie, do you want to go to the hospital? Fuck off. And they were like, right, no problem. Um, there's nothing we can do here. He doesn't need an ambulance. And I said, and I said to the guys, look, I said, guys, I'm sorry. I said, I didn't think he needed an ambulance. It was just the police. And then one of the paramedics said to him, Charlie, what's your date of birth? And Charlie says, what's your date of birth? 
And the paramedic was like, okay, no problem. So I was then away. So then Charlie looked at me and he says, why did you call an ambulance for? And I says, I didn't. And he goes, yeah, I did. And I says, okay, I did. But I only did because the police didn't want to help you. And he goes, I don't want the police. I says, I know you don't want the police. He says, I want a taxi. I says, I know you do. He says, Captain, get me a taxi. I says, and by this stage, there was a whole line of taxis there now because they were expecting the train in from Dublin. And I says, now, as I said, he wasn't blind. He was partially said it. So this next line isn't as harsh as you might think. And I was just like, look, Charlie. Because as I say, he was walking about outside smoking. But, you know. I says, look, Charlie, there's a whole line of taxis there. If you want to go down and ask them for a taxi, work away. I says, but no one's going to take you because of the smell. So he went down to the first car, no. Second car, no. Third car, no. Fifth car, no. I think I didn't say fourth. I say fourth, no. But he went on down the line. And after a while, I looked down the line and I couldn't see him. And there was one of the taxi drivers standing about. And I says, where did, where did he go? And the taxi driver looked down and he says, there he is in the back of that car driving out now. And then, you know, in a taxi. And I says, holy God, how did the driver not smell him? And he was sitting in the back seat. And he says, I says, how did the driver not smell him? And he goes, he'll smell him soon enough. And I says, how far do you reckon he'll get? And I said, and the driver says, or I think the taxi driver was talking to, he says, I wouldn't be surprised if it was, you know, he'll be back in a minute. So the car drove off, and we never saw Charlie again. I don't know if he got home or if the driver suddenly smelt him a couple of minutes later and threw him out of the car. But uh, there we go. So there's my little journal entry. Sort of dominant indictment of the police and the, well, not the ambulance service. The ambulance service did nothing wrong. But the, the dangers of shitting yourself and leaving yourself no way home. Well, the great crack. Customer service at its best. Cherry